Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I am here with another holiday gift idea. This one is really unique. Over the Thanksgiving weekend, my favorite fabric shop, HawthorneThreads.com, had a special deal that if you purchase $75 in fabric, you got this free um, tote bag panel, which I'm going to show you. What I didn't realize at the time was that that was just an exclusive offer for that weekend. But they have since released this panel to the public, and so anyone can order one of these panels. And they're currently having a contest where if you make the panel and then post a picture of your finished bag, you can win a $50 gift certificate to Hawthorne Threads. So I am making this video to enter that contest, but then also to show you an alternate way to construct this bag. Their panel includes instructions, but I wanna show you what I think is a very simple way to make this panel in a jiffy. And then you could also cut like size pieces of fabric and create your own bag. So um, this video serves many purposes and I hope that you enjoy the project and I also hope that I win that $50 gift certificate at Hawthorne Threads. So shall we get started? So when you order your uh, tote bag panel, and there's lots of choices, I chose this one that says I'd rather be reading. I'm an avid reader and the library is one of my uh, favorite places to go. So I'm gonna use this as my library tote. You can see there are four um, square, they're not really squares, they measure 14 inches wide by 16 inches tall. Um, four panels there, and then two longer rectangles that will be the straps. So the first step is to cut out your panels and you can align those if you have a rotary cutter and a mat and cut them at the same time. I think that's easiest. But if you don't have these tools, then you're going to want to cut yours out with scissors, of course. So I'm just going to align mine. And then go ahead and use the rotary cutter. Okay, so I have the interior and exterior panels cut and now all that's left are the straps. So they are 5 inches wide by 24 inches in length, which should offer us when we're done about a 10 inch handle drop, which is comfortable for most folks. And if you did want a longer handle with these panels, there is plenty of extra fabric there. You could easily cut out a longer strap. If you have, um, you live in some place where it gets very cold in the winter and you like to wear a coat, you might want a 14 inch handle drop. All right, so I have all of my pieces cut out and that didn't take very long with the rotary cutter. And so I'm gonna head on over to the iron and this is the typical way that I craft bag straps, which is just to fold that in half, press it, open it up, and then fold the raw edges in to meet on that center press line, and then fold it over one more time to create a finished strap. So I'm gonna head on over the iron and press those. Okay, so initially I fold it in half, and then I brought those raw edges in to meet on the center. Now, I just want to, in that channel there, I want to put in that pellon and then iron it in place. And that's this strip here. And then 
that just fits right in that channel. And then I'm going to iron that down and then fold the strap over one more time. Now while I'm at the iron, I'm going to go ahead and finish that second strap as well. So I have these straps ready to stitch and I just want to top stitch or edge stitch down that open edge to close that and then down the opposite edge to finish the strap. Okay, I have two fabulous straps ready to go and you can see how they're nice and rigid and they're not going to bend or twist because of that interfacing. Now I want to go ahead and press these panels. I suggest pressing those on the wrong side. Um, I don't know for a fact that this black ink will um, smudge at all, but I just don't take a chance whenever I'm working with um, printed fabric that has black on it. I press it on the opposite side because it would be so sad to ruin this gorgeous panel. So what I want to do is I'll press them on the opposite side and then for the exterior panels I am going to add one layer of that interfacing, the same pellon, just to the exterior layers. Okay, so I have my reinforced exterior panels and my two interior panels, which I used on the right, on the wrong side there as a pressing cloth, so I didn't have to iron on that printed side. And so to construct the interior, take the two interior panels and position those right sides facing. Sew down the side and across the bottom. I like to use 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You can use any seam allowance you like, just be consistent. Okay, I've stitched all the way around. The interior is complete. I just want to fold that top edge down approximately an inch. And you can press that with your hand and then set that aside for a few minutes and position your exterior panels right sides facing in the same way and sew down the sides and across the base. Okay, so now the exterior is complete. You see that in there? Before I turn it right side out, I just want to trim away about three inches from that top edge so I don't have too much bulk as I'm stitching around that. Then I'll go ahead and turn it right side out. Super duper cute. There's the front and the back. And I just need to fold that top edge down one inch. And then I'm going to fit the interior inside of there. And begin at the side seam and just put a pin every few inches to hold those two layers together. And that interior fits in there perfectly. This actually has a lot of body to it and with contents in it, it is going to probably stand up on its own. They use a really nice, what feels like a linen blend. So good quality fabric here. So, so cute. All right, last step. Take those straps and position them approximately two and a half inches from each edge. And you're just going to insert that strap in between the interior and the exterior layer so you can hide those raw edges there. And then when you flip it over, you can use that strap on the other side or you can measure to make sure that your straps are aligned. And it's 
almost done. All I have to do is put it on the deck here and stitch all the way around the edge. I'm going to do that and I'm going to take time to reinforce these handles because I'm going to put books inside of this bag. All right, my bag is done. And I am really excited about this. It's a gift from Hawthorne Threads to me. And now it's a gift from me to you because you now know how to make a tote bag and you have another great, simple gift idea for your friends and family. I think there's still plenty of time. If you head on over to Hawthorne Threads, they ship very quickly. You can order a couple of these panels. There's different themes and you can whip up some really beautiful totes for your friends and family. So as always, I thank you for sewing with me. It was an absolute pleasure. I will be back next week with our final handmade gift project. And then we're going to do an end of the year wrap up for Sewspire. And I'm going to share my vision for the channel in 2018. So until then, please know the creative genius in me celebrates the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful day, everyone.